careful where you fall asleep. A man passes out on a couch inside of a shop on Central, and it takes some pretty strong action by police to wake him up. Action 7 News reporter Liz McKernan joins us with the crazy video you're going to see. Only on 7, they caught the video of this guy? They did, Marissa, and what a wild ride all of this turned into. People working inside the store, of course, were too afraid to wake this so-called sleeping beauty who wasn't welcome to get some shut-eye. So cops came in to do the job themselves. It starts off with what looks like an innocent open mouth nap. But 35-year-old Sam Begay isn't at home catching some Z's. In fact, he's fast asleep snoring on a couch inside a clothing shop on Central. So the cop wakes him up and takes the unwanted sleeper outside. How much have you had to drink today? Four beers since you wrecked my apartment. Begay tells police he's been drinking and just got out of jail. Then, based on his next move, it looks like he doesn't want to go back. Stop. No, no, no. Stop. I did not it's, it. it's about to happen, Mr. Begay. The cop tells Begay to stop walking away 11 times and says another four times that he'll shoot a taser to get Begay to cooperate. But the suspect doesn't stop. <laughs> And it doesn't end with a simple taste. Instead, look, Begay takes off, starting a foot chase that lasts almost a minute. Cops dodging between cars through a parking lot, reloading the taser that takes Begay to the ground, now forced to wake up and listen to the law. Taser that takes Begay to the ground, now forced to wake up and listen to the law. And listen, he had to, obviously. Well, Begay was booked on the charge of battery on a peace officer. And according to court documents, his last stint in jail, he pled guilty to driving under the influence. Back to you, Rob. Tased and confused. Tonight, Salt Lake police are being accused of tasing a mentally challenged man, not once, but twice. It's uh, not, if that wasn't enough, the Salt Lake County Jail may have just booted the man out onto the street. ABC 4's Brian Carlson joins us live from the Salt Lake Police Department with this ABC 4 News exclusive. Brian. Yeah, Brett, the family of this mentally challenged man say he was not only wrongfully tased, but they say both Salt Lake Police and the Salt Lake County Jail abused, frightened, and humiliated him. I spoke exclusively with the man and his family, and they say no one should be treated the way he was. You've probably seen videos like these, where cops taser someone, and some say it borders on police brutality. That's exactly what Diana Elm says Salt Lake officers did to her mentally challenged son, Michael. I don't even have the words to express what I think of, of everybody that, that participated in, in the mistreatment and torture of my child. Michael is a paranoid schizophrenic who's 85% deaf, with impaired vision, and a low IQ. She says last month, two female officers tased him twice. According to Michael, they stood there with their foot on his face, holding him down. Police documents show the officers were responding to a late-night suicide call at Michael's apartment on 18th South in Salt Lake City. When Michael opened his door, one officer drew her gun, and the other grabbed her taser. I put my hands up. Up, up and took my head. Michael tells me he couldn't understand what they were saying. All he knows is they tased him. I didn't fall down the right way, and so they tased me again. Michael says he was so scared, he went to the bathroom in his pants. What's worse, after police took him to the Salt Lake County Jail, security staff turned Michael loose by himself at 2 in the morning and forced him to find his way home. Say Tonight, the TSA is standing by this video. It's a girl crying as security screeners check her for explosives. The 12-year-old is in a wheelchair, and her mother, who screeners kept at a distance, did the only thing she could. She recorded it. And tonight, our Jason Whiteley talked to the family and the TSA. Jason? Right now, the girl's mom and dad say they are astonished at what happened, telling us tonight the screeners did not use common sense when their 12-year-old daughter in a wheelchair passed through a security checkpoint in Terminal A at DFW Airport. It's okay. You didn't do nothing wrong. We're going to get you on your way, okay? The whole situation overwhelmed Shelby Walser. I was just, like, scared because I didn't know what they were going to do. The 12-year-old girl suffers from brittle bone disease and was flying to Florida for treatment. 
but the TSA detained her at DFW Airport on Sunday. What they did is like they went across and then they went down each finger. Screeners said her palms tested positive for explosives. It could have came off fertilizer because we have chickens and I could have run through something from them or it could have just came off the ground because... Shelby's mom said she could not comfort her crying daughter. She was ordered to keep back for the hour it took the TSA to call in bomb experts. I am by no means undermining our safety in the air. After 9-11, by no means am I doing that. But when it comes to children, common sense isn't in a textbook. The TSA told us we are sensitive to the concerns of passengers who were not satisfied with her screening experience, and we invite those individuals to provide feedback to TSA through a variety of channels. We work to balance those concerns with the very real threat that our adversaries will attempt to use explosives to carry out attacks on planes. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today's news report, Friday, December 14th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Okay, so you just saw those videos there. Um, I'm not sure if, they're, if this video is gonna get blocked or something like that. If it does, then I'll just have to re-edit it and show the articles, but I, I haven't done the, those types of videos in a while, so we'll see. Man dead after being tasered by Chicago police. A man has died after he was tasered twice in Chicago police custody, authorities confirmed. So it says here, officer said a 38-year-old Philip Coleman was arrested Wednesday night and uh, for allegedly beating his 69-year-old grandmother. Said Coleman became combative with officers during his arrest, police said at one point spitting blood into the face of an officer and sergeant. So he said that he struggled while being transported to court and the officers tasered him at the Calumet area lockup to subdue him. They said reasonable force was employed. But uh, pretty interesting, it says this uh, person that knew him said he wouldn't hurt a fly. He also said that he was a regular volunteer for this Rainbow Push Coalition, Jesse Jackson thing, a University of Chicago graduate and was listed as a director of hospice education. So, says the fa man's father, Percy Coleman, uh, told several news outlets that his son had never been in trouble. They were shocked by Coleman's actions, remember him as a polite, quiet man. From what I see, he'd just come to visit with his mama and leave. It was a real out of character for him. Said, I can't imagine him being dead. He was always a friend to me. So, this guy died by a taser. Police said in a statement that reasonable force was employed, including the taser deployment to gain control of the man. Like that guy in the first video who fired 11 shots and then said, get on the ground. The guy was on the ground. You could see the bullet shots, the blood coming out, and he's telling him to get on the ground. Uh, just insanity. Uh, these guys are totally fear-based. They watch too much TV. I don't know if they're getting on steroids or what, but... A uh, woman is brutally tased by police for trying to buy iPhones. You guys probably saw this. A Chinese woman living in Massachusetts was tased repeatedly by police at a mall after the store owners called police when she attempted to buy more than one iPhone as a gift for her family. The 44-year-old um, visiting the mall last week to buy Christmas presents ran into trouble at the Apple store. She can't speak English very well and was confused and workers refused to allow her to buy more than two phones. According to her daughter, who recorded the video of the customers buying multiple iPhones, prompting Apple staff to ask her to leave. The, according to the police, the store notified them of the incident and requested a no trespass order. When she returned to the store on Tuesday and attempted once more to buy the several iPhones, police were called to the scene. My mom says she doesn't know why they called the police because she doesn't understand what they are talking about. It said the manager of Apple store came and told her something, but she doesn't understand. Police claim she then resisted arrest, uh, forcing them to use a taser on her. Onlookers captured the incident on camera and can be seen in writing. Uh, Lee can be seen writing on the ground as the cracking electricity of the taser causes her to scream. An eight months pregnant woman tasered by police for parking in a handicapped spot says that Tiffany Rent 30 parked in a handicapped spot outside of Walgreens in Chicago on Tuesday. Rent, who is eight months pregnant, was confronted by police for parking in the spot. When the con confrontation escalated, Rent claimed that the officer tasered her. According to reports, uh, Rent tore up the parking ticket and tried to drive away. See, they don't like when you resist their authority. See, if their authority over you is illegitimate and you disregard it, um, now, a lot of people talk crap about um, 
minorities or whatever, blacks and people in these uh, uh, bad neighborhoods that basically don't have much of an economy, um, you know, they're resisting arrest. They're, they're resisting the programming. That white woman that you saw, she accepts the programming, and that's why it's conflicting in her mind. She can't rationalize it. She says, oh, it was out of control, uh, unjustified use of force or whatever, basically use common sense. Well, there is no common sense, lady. You should know that when you go through those airports. But I found that the um, that uh, blacks in that, they usually tend to resist uh, this illegitimate authority over them, so they'll just walk away. I don't know what color this woman was, but she tore up the, uh, tore up the, the ticket. It says here, Rent and her fiance were at the drugstore to purchase a battery for remote, and Rent's two children were also in the SUV. So this is the thing. The officer then told uh, her that she, that he was arresting her and wrote her a ticket after she had uh, um, crumpled it up and threw it on the ground and wrote her a ticket for littering. Littering. When asked for identification, Rent responded with an attitude saying, I ain't giving you expletive, right? So it says here that the officer threatened to use the stun gun if she attempted to leave the scene, the, le the scene of the crime, right? There's no victims, but they like to say that. After receiving the ticket, uh, she tore it up and tried to get back in the car. The officer told her that he was arresting her and wrote a ticket for her littering. When asked for identification, she responded with an attitude saying, I ain't giving you shit. It is unclear whether the officer knew that Rent was eight months pregnant when he tased her. Israeli soldiers attacked Reuters cameraman in Hebron. It says here the cameraman was in a car marked as belonging to Reuters and uh, marked with press. It said they were heading to a checkpoint where a Palestinian boy with a toy gun had been slain earlier yesterday. They had beat the Reuters cameramen with their rifles before stripping them to their underwear and detonating a tear gas uh, canister in front of them. Next up, we have the border guard officer that was involved was not is not afraid of threats. After shooting Palestinian teen, she believed she was uh, attacking a comrade. The officer recounts the incident and dismisses the Palestinian website's threats that your end is near and you're a criminal. The police chief defends the action, saying her response attests the responsibility and loyalty of an Israeli occupation soldier. We have here uh, Walmart security guard shoots shoplifting mother. Uh, shot her dead in the parking lot. She tried to escape. There were two small children in the car at the time of the shooting. So he's just sticking up for um, sticking up for Walmart. Nothing wrong with uh, defending your property, but we're talking about a huge complex. Like I said, we just talked about it. Exploits workers and uh, marks things up. I mean, he's what defending uh, ch you know cheap goods that probably are sold for ten dollars and and cost like uh, fifty cents to make. But uh, I guess he suspected her of shoplifting. He had four Texas police. Officers are revenue collectors charged with escorting loads of narcotics for pay in Texas. Charged with protecting drug smuggler shipments of narcotics through the area. The city issued a speed camera ticket to a motionless car. The owner calls it shockingly obvious that his car was not moving. So, said it was going 38 miles per hour in a 25 zone. But the Mazda wasn't speeding, it wasn't even moving. Just after the recent Oregon, or Oregon uh, shooting, you have shooting suspect in Connecticut, son of a teacher at school, where he killed over, what, 27 children? Sounds like the China, China story. Knife-wielding man injures 22 in China. Of course, that's his engineering blowback. I've mentioned this before. It, the gun control ain't going to do anything over there. They're, they just get real nasty using knives, cutting up children. There's some serious psychological effects from the watch out policy and eugenics that's going on. But there's, like I said, it's going on over here, too, in America. What are you going to do, ban all knives? Are you going to ban all guns? The shooting at the Connecticut school shows once again there's no end in sight to our lethal way of life. There are 88.8 .8 guns per 100 people in this country. It says here a petition calls on White House to address gun control. Here Bloomberg slams Obama on guns saying we need immediate action. Emotional Obama vows action to prevent shootings regardless of the politics. In work alone though, a second gunman is a, at large. It takes a militarized police to do it. Too bad they'll never be able to prevent it. Thank you.